Hey everybody, welcome to Altium Academy. I am your host, Zach Peterson, and today we are going to look at how you can reuse outjob files and draftsman files to help you really quickly generate outputs for a new project. So recently, one of my LinkedIn connections posted a question about quickly generating outputs in Altium Designer. And if you're familiar with Altium Designer, you know that one of the main tools for generating outputs is through an outjob file. So what we're gonna look at today is some ways that you can use these different files to very quickly reuse settings from an old project in a new project and generate those outputs very quickly. Let's go ahead and get started. Jesus writes, hello Altium, would it be possible to put some effort into making the outjob files and project releaser more useful and meeting engineer needs? And then he goes into asking about how he can very quickly create and place documentation in the right folders. This can be a frustrating part of working with Altium if you don't know about this one little trick, which is the fact that you can actually reuse your outjob files. So what I like to do, and this is the actual comment I left here, was I wrote, I have a single outjob file that I use as a template and I copy around to different projects. I can then modify it to create outjobs that are client specific. So this is actually what I do in projects. I will actually take an existing outjob file and then I will put it into a new project along with some drawing templates, and I will use those to create outputs on the new project that I'm working on. And when I do that, it's gonna carry over those settings from the old project. So I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. So I'm inside Ultium Designer, and uh, here we're just gonna take a look at our familiar little voltage regulator that we've been playing with in some earlier videos. And so I'll go ahead and link to those earlier videos uh, in the description. And you can take a look at those videos. Um, but here we've got this little board here, just looking at it in 3D. We've taken care of almost everything. Obviously we've got to move designator C5, um, but just for the moment, what we're going to do is we're going to take a, this design and then what we're going to do is actually generate all of the outputs that we would need uh, in order to send this into manufacturing. So normally, if you were not reusing an old out job file, what you would do is you would right click on the project, go to add new to project, and then as you scroll down, you can see here that there's an entry for an output job file or with an extension out job. So when I click that, it's gonna open up this new file. You'll then wanna save it and give it a file name and everything. But now you'll notice here that there's a bunch of different entries and they're all blank. Now this is where it can be time consuming because obviously it's giving you a totally blank out job file and you would need to go through and configure everything manually in order to match the settings for your specific project. Now, if you're like me, what I actually do is I have a consistent set of deliverables that I always give to clients. So that set of deliverables always contains a few important things. First, it always contains a set of Gerber files. Then it also contains a set of ODB++ files. So next, it contains an NC drill file, and then a pick and place file for assembly, and then an IPC net list that's gonna be used for testing. Then we also have a bill of materials, and then finally, we have a set of drawings. So the drawings are PDFs of the schematic, PDF of the fabrication drawing, and then a PDF of the assembly drawing. So that's nine different things. It can be time consuming to set up all of those different settings for nine different things every single time you have to create a new project. So I understand that it can be frustrating, but guess what? All you really have to do is set it up once and then after you have it set up once, what you can do is you can actually copy one of those old configuration files into your new project and reuse it. Just as an example, I'm gonna go over here to this old project and I'm gonna grab my old out job file, fab and assembly drawing. I'm just gonna do control C to copy them and then go over here to my switching regulator project file, hit control V and paste them in there. Obviously, once you get over to this new folder and you copy these, you want to then uh, rename these so that they have more, maybe more of a generic name. I'm just gonna call this one outputs and then fab and assembly. So here what I'm gonna do is move first the outputs file into the project. 
When you open it, it's gonna appear as a free document. Then you wanna move it in here to the project. It's gonna appear under the settings area. Now, what I've done is as soon as I've moved this in, you can see it automatically queues in to the PCB document. Here, we would wanna make sure that we've uh, set this to either a specific schematic document or to the entire set of project documents. So here I'm just gonna leave it on power schematic. Here you see these two entries in red for fab drawing and assembly drawing. Now these two entries are red because as you can see inside the projects area, we haven't added in those drawings yet. However, they do exist in the project folder. And so what we could do is we could then add these into the project either by dragging them in or we can go to add existing to project and we can just select them both hit open, it's gonna add them into the project. So as soon as you do that, you see that these two entries are no longer read anymore. Now, when we copied this existing out job file into this new project, you can actually see here that it has all of these different output containers that are already set up and they're ready to go. Essentially what you could do is you could just hit generate content and it will start generating these files for you and then they will uh, get saved somewhere on your computer. Now you wanna make sure that if you're gonna do this, that it's gonna save everything to the right location. So here you can see when I hit the change button here in this output container, what it did is it opened up this dialog here. So here we're in the assembly drawing settings dialog. So here under outputs, um, it's going to actually create a folder in my project folder called outputs. And then it's going to create a PDF folder as a subfolder. And then it's gonna save this container as assembly.pdf. So you just wanna make sure if you do this, that when you have uh, copied this out job file into your new project, that this path is not referencing some other location on your computer. Because otherwise, those files are not going to get saved inside the project folder. They're gonna get saved in some other folder. So just be mindful of that and make sure to check these paths first. Now the way I've set this up is I've set it up so that it always goes out into this outputs files folder. And that's where all of those outputs are gonna get generated. So just as an example here, let's just do the schematic real quick. Now that I've dragged this in here, I can hit generate content and you can see there it is. It's generated my schematic. And of course, if I go over here to the project folder, you can see here it's in this uh, outputs folder and then PDF and there's the file that we just created, schematic.pdf. Simple, all we had to do is just copy a file over. We don't have to manually enter in everything. Here, another thing to look at, right? You can see here, there's an error, invalid variant. So that's because in the previous project, uh, this particular out job file was referencing a variant of the PCB that was used in that earlier project. So not all projects will need or use variants. Just make sure that if it is referencing an older variant that you set this to no variations because you can see here in the projects window that there are no variants on this project. So as you click through all of these different containers and click generate content on each one, it's going to generate all of those files using the exact same settings that you had in your other projects. So this is really great if you're like me and you have a consistent set of deliverables that you give to clients for every project. Now, of course, some clients are very specific. They have specific requirements that they need and you can still modify these settings even if you reuse an out job file. So all you gotta do is just right click on one of these outputs. Just for example, we're gonna look at the Gerbers, hit configure, and you can go through and do all the configuration that you need. Now here's an important thing to note here, and I did this specifically for this reason. Look here in this Gerber setup dialog. Now this was copied from a previous project, and the board in that previous project only had two layers. Now I've imported this into a board that has four layers, and so you can see here in the PCB, just count them up, there's four layers down here. What I wanna do is when I'm configuring this Gerber, I need to make sure that when I go over to this layers tab, I enable these other two layers. Otherwise, it's not going to generate Gerber files for those two layers. I can go ahead and hit okay. Same thing with the ODB. In the ODB, I wanna make sure that I go over here and just check that these two layers are configured. So make sure that the configuration settings on your new out job file match specifically what you have in your project and what you need. Not all of the settings are gonna copy over, but a lot of them will, and that saves you a whole lot of time when you're creating a new project. So the next thing that I wanna look at is the draftsman files. So 
As you can see here on the projects panel, we have two draftsman drawings that we added into the project, copied them into the project folder, and then just added them into the project like any other file. Now, what I'm gonna do is open this, and we need to do a board update in each of these draftsman files. Now, the reason we need to do that is because if you just go over to this output container and then click generate content, it's gonna try and pull information from the PCB into these draftsman files. But you need to make sure that the draftsman document is pointing to the correct PCB doc. So that's pretty simple to do. All you need to do is just open up the draftsman file. Here on the right side in the properties panel, you just need to make sure that it's pointing to your PCB doc, which in this case it is. And then you can go through and do any placement of any drawings that you need to do inside the draftsman file. So here what I can do is I can right click and then import changes. After doing the import, I can then right click, place, and do a board fabrication view. And then it's going to allow me to put this into the file. Now, once I place this, I can set the scale, do any of the other stuff that I might need to do to get this thing ready to be sent off for fabrication. So now I've got my drawing. I can go through and dimension it. I can update the fab notes. Here are all of these Gerber films. I can go ahead and modify these. You'll, of course, want to make sure that in this one, you are pointing to the correct layer. So here I would want to change these layers and same thing with this one, and then set these to the right scale. So there's a little bit of work that you have to do with the draftsmans, just like you would do if you were uh, doing this from scratch. However, you'll notice that it pulls in a lot of those settings from the old project and maintains them. And you can see here, I've got my whole set of fab notes from this old project that have been automatically copied into this new project. So you're gonna wanna do the same thing with the assembly drawing. So just open it, do a board update, change any of the settings with respect to the board views that are in the assembly file, and then save it and close it. Once you do that, you can go back over here to the out job file, click generate content, and then you're done. So that's a pretty simple way to reuse some of those settings without going through and creating templates or anything. Essentially, your old files are acting just like templates, and you can copy them into new projects as you see fit. All right, that's all I got for you today, folks. Thanks for watching. Make sure to hit that subscribe button, hit the like button. You can keep up with all of our updates. And of course, on this stuff, don't forget to call your fabricator, folks.